Have you ever wondered how to leverage IG Reels or Instagram Reels for your clothing store? Howdy y'all, it's Aaron here. I hope you're doing well. And in this episode, I'm gonna share with you step-by-step -step how to use Reels to grow your clothing store. As always, make sure that you grab something to take notes with and stick around until the end where I'll be sharing with you exactly how to set up your ad campaigns. For those who are new, I wanted to tell you that I like to break down what we are going to be talking about in lists because it's much easier for you to understand and follow along. So in this video, I'm gonna give you four steps to successfully start running Instagram Reel ad campaigns for your clothing store. All right, so number one, what are Instagram Reels? Understanding what we're talking about is important because it will help you throughout the rest of this video to get creative ways to use this new ability to your advantage. Reels are shorter, most of the time more entertaining stories. I think it's a great mix of video and stories like Instagram stories with even more capabilities. Instagram also has its own built-in video editing software so that you can add or cut multiple clips together with music. The too long didn't read version of this is that they copied TikTok and they added their own spin to it and added it natively inside of Instagram. And unless you've been under a rock and completely off of Instagram, then you've likely watched a reel or two because it's literally in almost every section of the content that you scroll. If you've been on the platform for longer than like one minute, you are going to see a reel or a video. All right, before we cover how to find winning reels for your ads, I just want to say howdy. My name is Aaron. I'm one of the co-founders here at BitBrandy and we're an e-commerce growth agency that specializes in helping clothing stores grow and scale profitably online. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on any of the latest strategies for clothing stores, just like you. We drop new content every single week. All right, so number two is how to find the best performing reels. Your homework assignment here is that you need to go out and create reels organically for your store. If you can, two times per day for the next two to three weeks. Yes, that is a lot, but we need to find some winners. The only way you're going to get reels to work well for your ads is if they speak to your audience. And the only way for you to realistically know your audience would engage with your reels is to post them organically, especially right now when you know that Instagram is pushing reels and videos. Like literally right now, if you posted a reel and it was on a trending sound, you could get 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 views, you could get 2,000 views. You post a regular post, you may reach 300 people, you may get in a regular video, which is a little bit less, you may get 200 views, but a reel, you could get 1,000. Let's jump over to Instagram and look at a few reels and talk about some key areas to be looking for. All right, so first off, I just wanna say that, hey, yes, this is our Instagram uh, page. Make sure you go check it out, go check out our Instagram profile. But look at the reels here, I wanna show you. So this has 2,000 views, 900 views, 2,000 views. This one has like 3,000 views, 2,000 views. Uh, so those are the reels, and then let's check out the videos. So the videos, if you saw here, 200, 85, 127, 200, 400, right? So what do you see there? A zero is missing, a lot more engagement is done through the reels. So let's go here. I just wanna kinda of share this. This trending sounds. Three, two, one. So very specific to you on like what's actually happening here. But let's say here for this, this is original audio. Let's see how many times it's been used. So reel has been used 46,000 times, probably something to check out. What you could do here though as well is click save audio and then it's saved to your phone um, or more so to your Instagram and so you could use it later. Let's find a couple more. It's, this is just proof that you could literally do anything. This person's doing cryotherapy and they, they're just using a, a country song. Again, similar song. Very well done here. All right, been used very popular. 284,000 reels have been made here. Obviously that's, uh, what I would say here for this one is like, you wanna find the ones that are like less than 100,000. Uh, the ones that are already 300,000 reels or more, it's probably gonna be harder for you to, to stand out because it's no longer as new. Um, so just keep scrolling through till you find some. This is the best way that I know of to find these. You can actually go to also over to YouTube, um, but there are accounts on here, at least the ones that we follow, where they will tell you the new sounds that are like, maybe got 1,000 or 2,000 um, 
total people using them, but they're trending sounds and they've been getting a lot of engagement really quickly. And so you wanna try to find those as well. Um, I don't know if we'll find one of those today, but they do change often. And then you wanna go and look up those songs and you can search for them as well. So. All right, so a couple of things here too is as you are inside of the Instagram Reels and you find the content that you, like the, I guess the most important part is that like find things that are actually resonating with you that help stand out so that you can take ideas from it, right? This person did really quick motions with the songs. You would probably wanna do that for this as well. If you like the big landscape videos and like bigger picture and more like methodical, then do something like that. Find something because more than likely for your clothing store, you are doing something that you enjoy. So start creating content that you actually enjoy consuming. And then uh, what is it I heard the other day? It's like do R&D. So uh, replicate and duplicate or like rip off and create in your own whatever. But my point is like do your own research and find out what you already engage with and then take ideas from that to create your own content. All right, so number three is the strategy behind the setup. So the biggest thing you have to get right when creating ads on Instagram, Facebook, or any social platform is your content because these social networks are built off of a OCPM platform, which basically means that each experience is optimized for each individual person. It isn't like Google ads where you're shown to everyone who falls under a specific search term. What's great about this is that you can actually lower your cost of advertising by creating great ads. So let's jump over to my iPad. I'm gonna show you how we would want to get this set up. Okay, so the strategy behind this setup is very, very simple. We have to create great content. So let's start there, great content. And great content is objective, meaning that it really just depends on what you deem great content. You should know this because it is your audience and it's what you should engage with as well. If you put out this piece of content and you don't say like, okay, this is this is great or this is good, then your audience probably isn't as well. Probably just scrap it. Now, that being said, the way that we're gonna set these up, anything that's not necessarily the greatest, still put it out there. There's a lot of bands or a lot of artists out there who decided to put out a song that they didn't like and ends up being number one. So take this with a grain of salt, but we need great content. We must have great content because that is the backbone for social platforms. Now, if you're watching this channel to learn about Google ads, then um, you're probably in the wrong place, at least for right now. Maybe we'll do something in the future, but Google ads are not working the same way as something like a Facebook or an Instagram or a TikTok. So create great content. Number, number two, number one, officially at this point is we have to go into some kind of testing. What we do is we call this bat testing, but you have to have some kind of way that you can create elements to test. And inside of Facebook, what's great is they give us the platforms and abilities to test a lot of things at scale. So the first thing is to test a um, all of our creative. So we're focused on creating, on testing our headlines, right? A lot of people wanna test that. Our imagery um, slash videos, so this is just our creative element and then our primary text. Now, in order of importance here, I'll just put a little number next to these because it is important. So number one is our image or videos. Number two is our headline. Number three is our text. This is likely 70%, 20%, we're gonna put percentage and then 10% as far as like importance. So they will use the image or video to stop the scroll. Then they will use a headline to support that. And then they will read the primary text to potentially push them over the edge. But a lot of the decisions, a lot of the areas to help them make um, the next click is right there, image and videos. So the image or videos, the headline has to be good, and then the primary text. So that's what we're gonna do for testing. What we suggest for testing is to test a concept at a time. For example, for this concept, we're just talking about reels. You could get granular inside of the reels and say, I'm gonna do talking head type reels, or I'm gonna do music video style reels, or vlog style reels if you wanted to. But there's so many different ways that you can do this, but this concept, just think of it as a test of only reels. You wanna know your best reels so that you can move it into the next stage, which right over here, which be our dynamic creative testing. And if you watched any of our videos before, you know we love dynamic creative testing. It allows us to create content at scale very, very quickly and not go back to what 
people have been preaching years ago, which is to create several different ad sets and several different audiences and several different images or videos and then test all of them in an ABO. We don't want to do that. We're going to set this up as a CBO. We're going to take the best elements from this section up here uh, from our testing and then we're going to create multiple different reels. So let's hopefully get five or six different reels there. Okay. And then we're going to test five or six different headlines. And I'll just label this here. And then we're going to test, let's just say, I don't know, at this point, primary text will test three. It's whatever ends up coming out of the winning elements from here in the, te in the test are going to be pulled over into dynamic creative. So sometimes you may have a lot, sometimes you may have a little, but the point is we need to test this content. I'm going to put R here for the reels because that's the concept that we're testing. So what Facebook's going to do is it's going to test the combination of this and this and this. Maybe it'll test this concept over here and then it'll test with this headline or this text or this primary text or this headline. And so it's going to spit out and maybe it'll do like, I don't know, four different types of ads. I'm just going to again label them reels. And then from those four reels, we may have one to two of those. So let's just say at this point that we got this is a winner and this is a winner. We're going to take those post IDs and then move it into step number three, which is prospecting. And this prospecting is just going after new customers. And a common misconception here is that the DCT or the dynamic creative is actually going to get worse results than the prospecting. Not necessarily. What we're looking for prospecting is stability and this may get worse results. For example, you may get $30 purchases over here and you may pay 35 over here, but as long as it's, scalable, meaning that like we can actually continue to acquire customers profitably, then we'll just keep running our best performing ads. So we'll take out the best performing ads here. We'll run it in its own uh, campaign or sorry, we'll run it with the campaign alongside this. And there we go. Found these two winning reels. Now the part that's missing here is that we need to look and identify what made these reels great. So I want to know about the content. I want to know about the headline. I want to know about the text and I want to duplicate that again for our next concept. And then we go back all the way to the top here and repeat that process. And maybe this time we'll do, um, instead of just doing reels, we'll do like talking head reels. We'll test it out. And go through the whole process again. One question you probably have is bat testing. So this is a brand awareness campaign. We are trying to hit 2000 people. i just hit that. And then have the campaign turn off dynamic creative testing. This is for conversions. Let me just label these for you. This is for conversions. And then this is for brand awareness. We wanna hit 2000. And then this third campaign is for conversions as well. Purchases uh, rather going for conversion. So that is the strategy behind the setup, a systematic process to go over your content to make it better and better and better. And remember, you don't ever really lose unless you stop trying to create better content. But this is a, I mean, that's what you're getting into with social media platforms and social media advertising is creating great content because that's what people want to see when they're consuming their content on their phones or a desktop or wherever they're consuming it. But that's what they want to see is great content. All right, before we jump into number four and get inside of Ads Manager to show you how to set up this campaign, I wanted to tell you about our free masterclass training for clothing stores that will walk you through the five pillars that you must have in place for your online store to scale consistently and profitably, no matter what is going on in the world. If you want access to this free training, make sure you check out the link in the description down below. All right, so number four is building your campaign for success. All right, now we are finally here. This is the part that is honestly so crucial. And I know I mentioned earlier about the content being the most important part. This is definitely comes in at a close 1.5 or two on that scale. But if you don't understand how to set up the campaign, you can still win with great content. It will just take you a lot longer and won't give you the best opportunity for success. So let's go ahead and jump inside of ads manager all right we are synced up okay so now that we are inside of ads manager i just want to walk you through the most important campaign to set up so let's talk about the dynamic creative testing campaign and how to set that up i'm also going to show you how to get those reels off of your phone or computer and into ads manager so let's go ahead and click create here 
All right, so what we're gonna do is go ahead and click conversions. There's options here to name the campaign. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. So this is our, we'll just call it our dynamic creative test um, for reels. And the audience we're going after is broad and the ads that we're gonna use are, I don't know, it's a talking head reels. I'm just throwing it out there. It could be whatever you would like to be. I use caps because it's just easier to find and easier to see and the, all the small text just kind of throws me off. So campaign budget optimization, set this up for yourself. If you need to know how much to spend for your budget um, and you're just starting out, all you have to do is just comment the word calculator down below and we will send you over our free advertising calculator so you can figure out the budget you need for your ad. So let's go ahead and say here, we're gonna spend $100 per day. Campaign budget optimization is turned on. I'm gonna go ahead and look here. We're gonna run the ads all the time. Auction is on, conversions is on. No ad spending limit is changed. Go ahead and click next. Very simple on that side. Um, this is defaulting to mean actually something new where it's just website and shop. Facebook direct up approximately 10% of your traffic to the shop within inside of Facebook. Um, it looks like the website option is there as well. That's what we're going for. Um, you can test out the shop inside of Facebook. They are pushing that because they need more data and they just need um, more stores to do something. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and choose website just because that's what we're familiar with. Um, we have done website and shop before, we have done website and app before. But for right now, for this specific example, we're gonna go ahead and choose website. The conversion event that I'm looking for is purchase. That is the only one that you should be caring about as well for this campaign. We need to tell Facebook what to give us, right? Not add the cards, not website clicks, not landing page views, we want purchases. All right, dynamic creative must be turned on. Once you do that, basically what it's saying is that in this CBO, this ad set is not adjustable, meaning that like this ad set is going to go towards uh, this ad, right? So it's one campaign, one ad set, one ad. Although there'll be multiple ads created, it's only going to have the ability to change from inside of here, which is what we want. We want Facebook to be able to determine that budget and not spread across a bunch of different places like everybody else says to do. All right, so the age, gender, location, that's what we're focused on. We're focused on broad. So go ahead and change this. I'm gonna focus on, let's just say here, 25 to 55 is kind of a default here. Not all genders, we are looking for women. Um, and then for the detail targeting, nothing. We don't wanna worry about that. The content will take care of itself. It's a whole nother video um, in itself, actually. See more options just because I wanna always show you what's going on here. All people, again, uh, we don't necessarily need to do anything there. We may deliver ads beyond your audience for eligible and ad objectives if you'd like to improve results. What I don't like Facebook is doing or Meta is doing is that it's basically saying like, hey, choose what you want to do and then like, we're going to do our own thing. Like we never really know if it expanded or if it didn't expand or anything like that. So I just I don't like that um, at all. So, all right, so next thing up is the placements. We prefer to get rid of the audience network. Everything else is okay. But audience network, that's like inside of the game apps, anything like that. You're not saying you cannot do that but it's just something that we haven't necessarily seen uh, do as well. So we're really focused on the feed. Um, sometimes we even close these out and actually just focus on this feed where we'll take out Instagram Explore. Again, completely up to you on that part. But we do change out, take out the apps and the sites. Next thing up here is specific mobile devices and operating systems. Leave this alone. In-stream ads are included. Don't worry about that. Block lists, anything like that. Inventory filter nothing really to change inside of here i do want to make sure that we see the attribution setting all right so there's the attribution setting almost missed that one we are focused on a one day click or view what this means is that like we want somebody to be able to take action within one day of clicking or viewing and also we want to attribute it to facebook so if they clicked and viewed our ad but then they also saw an email and then they made a purchase on email and it's a seven day, then Facebook will say that there was a purchase there and Clavio may say there was a purchase on there and there weren't two purchases, there were only one and now we split it between the two of them, which is not what we want. We want to be able to know which one actually made people pull the trigger and actually make a purchase. All right, so everything else looks good. Let's go ahead and click next. And then I'm gonna make sure that I use my Instagram page here. Single images and videos. So we can select as many images as we want. I'm gonna select multiple here. Um, but what we really are focused on is the reel. So I'm gonna upload this reel and then I'm gonna show you how I did this. So let's see here. 
All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and select, I need to make sure to approve that, but I'm gonna select the videos. I actually uploaded a video to my desktop. This is a video from just an account that I follow. Um, it was just more so the proof of like how to make this happen and I'll show you here in a second. But the biggest issue you're gonna run into is how do I take my Instagram reel with that music and how do I take everything from Instagram because it doesn't really let you copy it over very easily. So I'm gonna show you a desktop app to do it. You should be building your campaigns on desktop as well, not building campaigns on your mobile device. So this looks like it's still processing. So we'll go ahead and wait here. All right, so the video is completed here. I'm gonna go ahead and click that. It's giving me a little icon. Hey, this is not gonna be able to work on uh, mobile news feeds, explore, blah, blah, blah. Basically, it's not gonna be able to fit on certain placements. So make sure when you do download this that it's focused on a real placement, um, not real as an R-E-A-L, but real as an Instagram reel. So go ahead and click continue here. We're gonna leave the preview on. We need to type in a URL. Okay, we typed in the URL. Um, there we go. You haven't selected a domain that prioritizes iOS 14. Your ad may deliver uh, people who are opted out of the tracking or later. Select a different domain, do app domains. Here we go. Perfect. Okay, so there's the ad. Uh, this is what it would look like on the feed. This is what it looked like on Marketplace. This is what it looked like on Stories and um, Reels. Now, so the content is created as a reel, but can be used on other platforms or other placements rather, where it could be shown as an actual post inside of the feed. That's not what we're looking for. We're looking for just the, the content from the reel, and we don't really care where the placement is at. It's gonna be run on reels as well, but running ads only on reels is actually quite expensive. We're just looking for the content to be shown on different platforms. How did we do this? Um, and what I would tell you here is like, you can select select multiple images here. Let's so let's go ahead and select. You would test if this was real. So let's just pretend here. You can add up to 10 reels. I would suggest between six to eight. You could add a primary text by this dress. You really want it. You can do up to five here. You can do up to five primary text. Okay. And then the headline, like I said here, so the primary text won't show as much until they actually click the, the headline they will. Oh, sorry, the other way around. Primary text will show the headline may not show unless you actually click in. Um, there we go. All right, so it will show different options inside of here. What's good about Dynamic Creative, it's gonna take the best elements as we mentioned earlier and make a combination of them. Uh, the best headline, the best primary text, the best image of what it feels confident with to run those ads. Now. One thing I do wanna show on you inside of here is, okay, once you've finished adding your 10 elements, or like I said, the six to eight elements, the, the primary text and the headlines together, you would go ahead and double check everything. Show call extension on your website, don't worry about that. Click, make sure that this says shop now, don't worry about anything else, and then click publish. But the one thing that you wanna do is you wanna go over to, there's a free software out there called Capwing. Um, so you can click this button right here to go forward, and you can actually grab your Instagram, URL. So let's go to Instagram here, scroll through till I find us a reel, which is, this is more of a, a reel that I just saw, which is why it worked. So let's scroll over to, I see a reel. This is the reel that they copied over as a TikTok. We're gonna go click here, click copy the link. We're not gonna sit around for this whole time because it could take a moment to do so, but it's going to pull up your image here. And then all you need to do is click export. It's gonna tell you just wait a few minutes and it will export and it will start the staging process downloading this for you. One thing to note though, is that you can want to remove the watermark for free, sign in to get three watermark free exports. So eventually you'll have to pay for Capwing. I don't know how much it actually costs per month. Let's go ahead and see here. So the actual cost for this, if you go outside of the three per month would be $16 a month to have all of your videos and just plug them in here and be able to pull them off of this very easily through Instagram. So if you want to do that completely fine, once you do, uh, once you upload the video, then you'll be able to see that this is like 59, 50% complete. You'll be able to export the video 
download it to your downloads folder or your desktop and then just pull it off of your desktop to your ads manager just like what we did here so capwing we are not an affiliate with them not associated with them it's just software that i know about that's very powerful and you don't have to sign up to actually use the software. The information will be down like the bottom right hand corner. It will show like a little cap wing uh, logo or you sign in, create an account and get rid of the watermark that way. But the most important thing is that you're actually getting your reels with the sound and that's a really difficult way to do it. Or you pull up your phone and then you screen record that way. Um, don't really suggest that one as much because it's not as clean, but you could screen record from your phone uh, if you are an iPhone. All right, here we go. The image is complete, eight seconds there. And then all we have to do is click download file and there it is. That's all we need to do. All right, there is one more. Think of it as a bonus or your secret weapon. In 2020, we saw lightning in a bottle because there was so much demand for people to buy online that literally anyone could make an online business work. At least I saw a lot of people do that anyway. But then we started to get back into the brick and mortars and iOS hit, giving us less data. Less people shopping coupled with less data meant a lot of people started to struggle. A lot of clothing stores started to struggle. Maybe that's why you're watching this channel. You need some help. But until now, we haven't found a solution. There is a way to get more data back to Facebook and help you run your ads more successfully. We're using a tool called TripleWell for all of our clients and group coaching members. And this powerhouse allows us to see the lifetime value of a customer over the next 30, 60, and 90 days. But what I'm most excited about is the estimated action of the customers. What it means is that you can actually figure out when somebody is likely to make a second or third purchase, allowing you to make better marketing decisions plain and simple. It gives more back to the platforms we are already advertising on to give the people we work with better results. If you want access to this amazing tool, make sure you check out the link down in the description below. All right, I'm wishing you all nothing but success right now. And if you like this video and you're ready to learn more on how to grow your clothing store, make sure you check out this video next. All right, y'all have a great rest of your day.